I remember my first involvement with the SGU actually was uh, desperately trying to get my entry form for the Scottish boys across to their headquarters in, uh, in 1989. I just got it there in time and, uh, and celebrated with a first round exit at the hands of David Downey. I, uh, I curse his name still, but uh, but the SGU they organised all the events that I used to play in as a as a junior from the under 16s through to the you know the Scottish boys and the Scottish boys stroke play and the Scottish youths and I I, I enjoyed them all and had success in absolutely none of them. But it was that element of competition. It was fantastic, and uh, I used to love playing golf competitively and I desperately wanted to be a player. But uh, I think the lowest I got was handicap one at the age of 17. And at that point I realised that. Uh, I simply wasn't going to be good enough, so I decided to um, turn my attention to other things. And the next best thing is talking about it, I suppose. But the SGU has always been, always been there for me as a sort of a, a cruel master of <laughs> humiliation in public events for me. But uh, no, I've, I, I loved playing golf competitively as a youngster, and I hope that others get a chance to, to do that as well. I'm sure they do through the SGU. Well, I became professionally involved with the SGU actually working on uh, their annual awards dinner. I was emceeing that event and then from there I, I've got to work a bit more closely with them and was you know, very keen to get involved with this drive to increase membership at golf clubs as well. So I'm happy to try and provide a couple of voiceovers for that because it's a very important uh, thing that the SGU is trying to do to increase membership at the clubs. Yeah, dinner was great. Um, uh, Paul Laurie was obviously there, Colin Montgomery, they were the two receiving the Lifetime Achievement Awards and they're people that I've got to know through my career uh, pretty well. I've known Monty a long time as well, being a fellow uh, Troon man. So it was great to see them honoured, not just for what they've done professionally on the course, but for what they do off the course as well, especially Paul with his foundation to help youngsters and, and to see the other guys, the, the youngsters perhaps coming through, Callum McCauley's etc, other players like that and even uh, uh, you know beyond that players that might be coming through in the next, the next wave like Michael Stewart, another, another guy from Troon, <laughs> I'm boasting for Troon here but it was great to see the stages of Scottish golf and hopefully see the next, the next rank of players coming through, it was, it was a great night. I'm a member of golf. The only golf club I'm a member of at the moment is uh, is Royal Troon. It's, it's where I started my golf. I actually live down in London now. I've never quite got around to joining a club down there because I'm travelling so much. So Royal Troon has always been my, my base. But as a junior, I remember I joined Command at Brassy because I did such a good uh, junior section and that's what it was all about for me, competition. I really wanted to be a player. I was never quite good enough, but uh, but I think it was that element of competition and the, uh, the camaraderie with the competition with other players your age as well. It was a fantastic thing. At, uh, at Brassy and uh, you know being a member of a golf club is is so important for that and finding the right golf club a good golf club with a, with a sort of great social aspect to it. The benefits of being a member of a golf club I think are primarily social but also I mean it's tremendous competition as well with yourself and with others it's a, it's a great sport you're testing yourself uh, against yourself and against others but you're getting to meet people and you can nip out at this myth that it's hugely time consuming you can nip out and pay, play a few holes at, uh, at most clubs but I mean most of the friends I have are people I met in golf and still have you know many years after taking up the sport some of them still want to hang around with me despite my temper on the course. I'd say my favourite course, well I mean a lot of people would say a course like Loch Lomond or Turnberry, I think location is really important in a golf course as well, this sort of stunning setting. Uh, Loch Lomond when it's dry is, uh, and it's a, you know, a shame in a way that the Scottish Open's left there because it was just a wonderful setting, although Castle Stewart's going to be great as well. Turnberry, I don't think you can really beat that as location. Royal Trin, where I'm uh, still a member, is a, is a wonderful course. For me though, it doesn't have to be a pristine championship layout. I remember going over to Arran to play golf as a youngster and playing a wee nine-hole course. Corrie, you know, up in the foothills of, of Glen Sannox and the backdrop was spectacular and it was fun and that's what golf should be, it's fun. So it doesn't have to be a, you know, perceived great golf course to be considered one of my favourites. I, I would take a round at Corrie any time. I, I always look forward to the Masters. This is my 11th year of doing the Masters, although every year previously I've done it for, for BBC Radio. This year I'm actually doing it for BBC Television, so slightly different, but it's going to be very, very interesting. It's always for, for many people, even though the golf year goes around 12 months of the year now, it's still for many people the season really starts with the Masters springtime in Georgia, and there's always a great buzz when you get there. I mean, I'm really looking forward as well to seeing how players like um, like uh, Martin Laird and his first Masters, how he gets on, you know, just having having won on the, on the US Tour. He's got the game for Augusta as well, hits it a long way, he's got a great touch around the greens, but players on their first year at the Masters, it's always a bit of a struggle for them. So I'm very keen to see how he gets on, but it's, it's, it's great to see all the big players coming together. What's Tiger going to do? Phil Mickelson, defending champion, British chances, Westwood Rose. Yeah, there's no place like it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it seems to be pretty good at all levels at the moment in Scotland, or certainly very recently, because you had Sandy Lyle winning the Seniors Tour, and Paul Laurie in the European Tour, first win in nine years, Martin Laird in the, the PGA Tour in America, and at the amateur level, Michael Stewart and David Law both winning out in uh, South Africa. So, again, it's interesting. We've got the sort of past, the great players of the past, Sandy Lyle doing well, Paul Laurie, and who are the players coming through to replace them? And I hope that we have some players coming, coming through, guys like Michael Stewart. You never know who's going to kick on though uh, a sort of crucial development and I mean Ian Poulter was no player as an amateur neither was Paul Laurie in fact so you never know quite who's going to take the next step and become a successful player on tour and I hope that some of these players can do it for Scotland. As a member of a golf club you have more freedom to play when you choose. There's never been a better time to join a club so visit scottishgolf.org or call your local club.